Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless christian warrior speaks out after arrest for reading bible in protest of drag queen performance for kids john 15 18 through 20 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own yet because you're not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Hey, hey, what are you doing? What is the problem? Uh, my location. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? Uh, I just think that my hand. You didn't give any warning. You just grabbed the mic. No, this is the same one that we had in here. Yeah, that was in there. It was not out here. What is wrong with you? What are you doing? You didn't give us any warning. Warning. I think all you guys. They say we can have, we can, they say we can speak out here on the sidewalk freely. You can speak, but there's no amplified device. Nobody told us that. What are you doing? Nobody told me that. That's what happened right here. This is the, how come there's no amplification? What is this? Hey, you guys are acting like thugs, man. You are like straight up thugs. Hey, you're, you're, you're taking away my He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. He has every right to be out here engaging in speech. I just wanted to ask a simple question. I know, you know, a Nazi group showed up at the event Saturday and people were talking about that. And I just wanted for all of us to really think about this. What's wrong with Nazism? Like, seriously, what's wrong with Nazism? Because imagine for a moment that there's no God above us. No how below us, no heaven to live for, as John Lennon wanted to imagine. If we are truly the result of evolved stardust and our ancestors were fish and were the descendants of monkeys, then where do we find our value as human beings? What's wrong with Nazism? Unless if you understand that the God of Scripture says that we are made in his image. And so to murder innocent people is a violation to God's commands. As a Christian, I can say that Nazis, what the Nazis did in Nazi Germany was completely horrific and that they should have been resisted. In fact, the, the number one people group that resisted the Nazis were Christians. And the, and the reason why, the reason why was because they had a worldview that says that people are made in God's image and that they have worth and value. That's why Nazism is wrong. But if we're going to reject the Christian worldview, then we can't hold on to the fruit that comes from the Christian worldview while denying the actual foundation. Intolerance is an interesting word. Tolerance, intolerance, hatred, love, bigotry, things like that. Because really every culture has something that it's intolerant towards and something that it's tolerant of. I mean, there are things like murder and rape and, and you know, stealing and, and just crimes that we are intolerant towards as a society. And, and so every society has something it's intolerant towards. The question is just, what is our object of intolerance and what is our object of tolerance? When I showed up Saturday, all I did was read from Scripture on the sidewalk. I read from the Bible, Galatians. And by the way, I wasn't reading Romans 1. I wasn't reading any passage that spoke against homosexuality or anything like that. I was reading a passage from the Bible about love. And I was arrested. No reason, not given any warning, not told anything about my amplification needed to be turning down. I was arrested and taken into custody simply for reading the Bible on the sidewalk. You see, as we become more and more tolerant of sexual immorality in our culture, we've become more and more intolerant towards Christian morality. And the more we become intolerant towards Christian morality, the more we're going to see lawlessness in our streets. The more we become intolerant of Christian morality, the more we're going to see Nazis. The more we're going to see people who don't hold to a Christian worldview, who think that everybody is a result of animals, and therefore if we are animals, then why can't we just act like animals? We were called a hate group. We were told that we don't want to understand the other side, and I just want to set the record straight. I am more than happy to have that conversation with the other side. 
I did speech and debate throughout high school, and one of the things that we were taught in debate is that you can't make an argument for your side until you're able to make the argument for the other side. I've sat down and had hours of discussions with LGBTQ activists. I completely understand the other side. I want to understand the other side. But drag queens twerking on kids in lingerie is unacceptable. And that's something that we have to notice as a culture. We can have our disagreements, but there comes a time when we have to understand that we are all going to stand before God one day. And we're going to have to give an account for what we have done with the children in our society, the innocent minds and the children who deserve to be protected. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, persecution is coming. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is coming. 1 Corinthians 16, 13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. The Bible indicates that there will be a great apostasy during the end times, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is the Greek word apostasia, which means defection from the truth, properly the state, apostasy. Apostasia, from which we get the English word apostasy, refers to a general defection from the true God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. The end times will include a rejection of God's word, a further falling away of an already fallen world. Every age has its defectors, but the falling away in the end times will be complete and worldwide. The whole planet will be in rebellion against God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every coup requires a leader, and into this global apostasy will step the Antichrist. I believe this takes place after the church has been raptured from the earth. Jesus warned the disciples concerning the final days, as we read in Matthew 24, 10-12. And then many will be offended will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. These are the characteristics of the great apostasy of the end times. By looking at the news headlines of our world today, there can be no doubt 
we are living in the final moments before Jesus' return. Drag queen, Flaming Grant, tops Christian music chart. The 41-year-old made waves in the world of contemporary Christian music last week when the debut album, Bible Belt Baby, landed the number one spot for top album on the iTunes Christian music chart. One single on the album, Good Day, hit number two in the top songs category. Luke 18, 6 through 8. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? I am Flamey Grant. That's me. I am the shame-slaying, hip-slaying, singing-songwriting drag queen who spent 22 years as a worship leader before I started doing drag. What if more people did know that there was a worship song written by a drag queen? Here's the thing. I love this song. I believe in this song. I wrote it for my super awesome, inclusive, progressive, affirming church, and we have sung it on many a Sunday morning. It is a banger. It's an uplifting anthem for anyone who's felt excluded by the church, especially queer people, because those are my folks, but anyone who's felt like there just wasn't a place for them to worship at church. I put it last because I wanted people to feel empowered when they finished listening to my record, and I still want that. So all of this has got me thinking, what if we could get a worship song written by a drag queen to chart on the Christian charts on iTunes. I know that sounds wild, but I was inspired by my friend Semler, who is an out Christian artist, and their song Faith just went to number one on the iTunes Christian charts earlier this year. I think it's time for girls like us to have a shot at cracking the charts. The last days, church, will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy. 4, 3, and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last day's Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality. It is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3:14 through 22 And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus 
speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. 1 John 3, 4 defines sin as lawlessness. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. When I watched the following video, it brought tears to my eyes. The love of many has truly grown cold. Disturbing scenes on our streets, triggering calls to the wave troubleshooters, alleging patient dumping by local hospitals. This story begins December 1st at 5 p.m. with a phone call to our newsroom from a horrified University Hospital employee claiming security had just wheeled a woman all the way out to the corner of Hancock and Ali, just off hospital property, dumped the elderly woman out of the wheelchair on the sidewalk and left. Minutes later, we shot video of her, still in a soiled hospital gown and slippers, breathing hard under a blanket placed over her in 36-degree weather, her stuff in a bag next to her. The employee claimed she sees this a lot. So I started watching, and on December 16th at 7 p.m., 35 degrees outside, I record three security guards surrounding an elderly woman with a walker, slowly escorting her out of the emergency room. She can't move fast. It takes several minutes to make it all the way to the same corner of Hancock and Ali, after they have her across the street, off the hospital property, the security guards turn around and go back. When they clear, I catch up to her, and she says she can't breathe. They told me that I couldn't stay on the premises. Amen. Were you in there as a patient? Well, I needed to be a patient because I'm, I'm, I'm sick. What's, what's wrong with you? I've got COPD. I got diabetes. So they wouldn't even treat you? The doctor talked to me for one minute. And they told you what? That I had to leave. What reason did he give you? But he didn't give me a reason. She tells me she's homeless. Go ahead. I've got to go for I'm what's... in pain. I was in a car crash and it completely shattered my hip and pelvis. Right here, I got like. 30 something screwed. Matthew Haber and his mother claim a similar story. They met us in front of Wayside Mission in the spot where they say he was dumped in October. Anywhere. And I said, well, we can't find a rehab right now. Linda Haber said when Norton Hospital told her they had a room lined up for Matthew at Wayside, she checked it out. I called Wayside Christian Mission and just to confirm, and they said, no, they said, we, we can't do that. We can't. You know, they have beds and they help them find jobs and stuff, but we don't take medically needy people. We don't do that. And then she says she had a conference call with the hospital staff. The social worker said, we're going to take him to a, a shelter. And I said, which one? And they said, uh, Wayside Christian Mission. And I, I said, well, I know that's not true because I called them and they don't take him. And then the lady said, uh, the social worker said, well, that's history. Let's think of something else. Hubber says the next day her son was unloaded from a transport vehicle on the curb in the rain on Jackson Street in front of Wayside. I thought they've dumped my, my garbage I have to put out to the curb. That's how I, they dumped my son, like garbage. Linda Hubber said she was in no shape to care for him at home and she died after this interview. They put all their stuff on the sidewalk over there, they dump them off over here on the sidewalk and get back in that vehicle and get out of here just as fast as they can. Wayside staffer Perry Lane helped Matthew out of the rain and says he witnesses the same kind of thing dozens of times per year from hospitals as far away as Eastern Kentucky. He says they're often lied to about the medical treatment they'll receive at the shelter. What's the worst physical shape you've seen somebody <laughs> in who was dumped? This guy here was pretty bad. Paralyzed, people that can't walk that are totally relied on, on a wheelchair. Take them out, put them in the wheelchair, throw all their stuff on the sh and take off. Wayside's Chief Operating Officer Nina Mosley tells me it's not uncommon. She says they're not trained medically and sometimes they take patients right back to the hospitals. How can you dump people? These are human beings. How can you just dump them and leave them? That, just, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's unhuman, man.
Chaos is spreading in Western Africa after Niger was taken over by a military government last week. Seen waving throughout the capital were Russian flags. One was even put atop the French embassy, which had to be evacuated after it was attacked. The U.S. has also ordered a partial evacuation of its embassy. The Russian flags are a clear sign that Niger and a number of African nations have a new ally. While the Wagner Group's status in Russia remains unclear after its failed uprising against the Russian military leadership, Vladimir Putin is still using Wagner mercenaries to change the political landscape in Africa for Russia's benefit. Already on the streets of Niamey in the capital, people have been outside waving Russian flags, saying that they welcome Wagner, they want Russia to come, and they want the French to leave. Yevgeny Prigozhin's Wagner Group is operating in several African nations, and where Wagner goes, trouble usually follows. These surveillance photos from the French military show Wagner mercenaries burying bodies in Mali, where it's believed to have massacred more than 500 people last year. The Russian private army known for its atrocities in Ukraine and designated a transnational criminal organization by the U.S. government has taken its dirty work to Africa, where it offers its services to a number of governments, expanding Kremlin influence on the continent. South African Wagner expert Pauline Bax says the Russian mercenaries only go where they're invited providing services African leaders want. It's not that Wagner just comes in and rolls into a country and does whatever it wants. It does this with the approval uh, and often you know, the blessing of the ruling elites. It provides a private security to the people in power, offering military training to the army. It's uh, basically an organized crime syndicate that is operating on behest of the Russian government. Retired FBI Special Agent Eric Karen is a security consultant for several African nations. They're essentially Russians KGB, operating throughout Africa, committing crimes, committing murder. Western Africa now faces a possible war after a coalition of West African states vowed to restore Niger's president to power, while Mali and Burkina Faso vowed to defend the new military government. At the recent Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, the military leader of Burkina Faso seemed very pleased to have his photo taken with Vladimir Putin. Whether there will be war or peace in Africa, the new winner is Russia. Typified by signs held by protesters in Niger that say down with France, long live Putin. Video shows a Russian warship hit by what's believed to be sea drones at its naval base in the Black Sea. And Moscow has pointed the finger at Kyiv, though it claims it thwarted the attack and made no mention of damage. This comes as Ukraine's president says its military were pushing onwards with its counteroffensive, despite facing fierce battles in the country's east and south. In the Ukrainian city of Kherson, these residents are dealing with the aftermath of Russian shelling pounding the city overnight, which struck residential buildings, a public transport service and the city's landmark St. Catherine's Cathedral. The child was in the bathroom and I was lying on the couch. At first, I didn't understand anything. Then I was screaming from the shock. Colorado River Basin has lost 10 trillion gallons of water. The alarming news about a critical water lifeline for the western U.S. A new study finding the Colorado River Basin has lost trillions of gallons over the years as temperatures rise. As one of the nation's most precious resources continues to dwindle, tonight a new study confirms what researchers long feared. Over a period of 21 years, the vital Colorado River Basin has lost 10 trillion gallons of water due to warming temperatures. The staggering amount is enough to fill Lake Mead, the nation's largest reservoir, which today is dangerously depleted. How concerned are you by what you've seen? I would say that this is a wake-up call um, in terms of climate change's impacts on water availability from the Colorado Basin. With human-caused climate change, greenhouse gases pushing temperatures up, the Colorado River has seen a 10 percent decrease in flow, compounding an existing emergency, a lack of water for the West. Do you think this crisis is only going to worsen? I think in the long term, yes. 
Snaking through seven western states, the overtaxed river provides drinking water and irrigation to 40 million people. The evaporating water supply could mean more restrictions and inflated costs for farmers passed along to Americans across the country. I think it's difficult for people to accept the fact that we just don't have uh, the ability to extract more water out of the system. We're going to have to reduce our use. Even after a winter of record rain, researchers say the deluge isn't enough to reverse two decades of climbing temperatures. Tonight, as the snowpack evaporates and water levels drop, concern is rising along the Colorado. Psalm 107, 33 and 34. He turns rivers into a wilderness, and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness, for the wickedness of those who dwell in it. Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.